Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with the Heritage Pride Homestead. And today, I've got a question for you. What happens in your aquaponic system if your power goes out? Or if your pump stops? What do you do? So in my scenario, in my situation, my setup, my water pump delivers dissolved oxygen to my fish tank in the form of a venturi. Um, I have an air pump that aerates the uh, or oxygenates the moving bed filter, but I don't have an air pump in the water or in the fish tank. It's just venturi, uh, just fed by a venturi. So there are a few scenarios that could happen. One, my power goes out. Two, my sump uh, gets a leak and runs dry, runs out of water. And if that happens, then the pump uh, has a safety on it that automatically shuts off. Therefore, no fresh water, no oxygen is being delivered to the tank. Or three, my pump goes out, uh, which is kind of the same as number two. But in either of the situations, no more oxygen is getting to my fish tank. So what do we do? Well, we create a backup system. So what I've done here is I have built a uh, short-term battery backup system for my aquaponic system. Now it is to get the most out of the battery um, I am only running it as an emergency system and it's only going to feed oxygen to my fish. If my plants die then so be it. But if my fish die there's no coming back from that. You have to have fish, and fish are harder to come by than plants are. I can pop some more seeds in the ground or in the starter, and we're good to go. If my fish die, I have to start all over. So I want to keep my fish alive. So how do I do that? I provide them with oxygen in their system, in their, in their fish tank. So this backup system provides emergency oxygen to the uh, tank in the event of a power outage, a pump outage, or water, uh, lack of water in the sump tank. So uh, let me grab the camera. I'll show you how I installed it, how I built it. You can do this same system. Uh, it'll This setup, all in all total, probably cost about $250. But $250 bucks, um, one time and now I don't have to worry about my fish uh, dying in the event of a power outage or a pump outage. Um, so anyway, let me grab the camera. I'll show you how I built it, but it's super simple and uh, anybody can build this at home. Alright, first and foremost, let me put this little disclaimer out there. Uh, I have been doing electrical work residentially and commercially for uh, over 15 years now. So um, I'm very well um, informed on uh, the process of elect electrical things. So uh, if you're not, consult someone who is. If you are, then cool beans. So this is our control board, uh, or what I'm calling the control board. And it's just a piece of plywood that I have placed on, uh, on, on the frame of my greenhouse here. And I have, first off, I have a power strip, a 110 volt power strip up here on top. And that runs to my grid power. That runs to the power coming in for everything in the greenhouse. Uh, well, everything in the mini farm uh, area, but that's, that's grid power. Um, so over here we have this big pump that runs my uh, uh, moving bed filter. So that's not part of the system. It was just a neat place to put it up there. So don't pay any attention to that. Um, so let's start with uh, when it's on grid power. Okay, so grid power is here. When grid power is on, that strip is active. When that strip is active, then it feeds this little indicator here. These are 110 volt LED indicator lights. Um, I just picked those up online and you can see the green light is illuminated meaning our grid power is on and all systems are go. So 
Now from grid power, everything is running as normal on grid power. This does not feed anything in my aquaponics system. It's just an indicator to tell me that grid power is on and working. That does not mean that my pump is on. It does not mean anything else. It just means that grid power is on. So back to the grid power. The grid power is tied into a battery tender. And this is my first time using these uh, this battery tender brand. Um, it may not be big enough for the battery that I have. The battery is brand new and I plugged this thing in last night um, at about 7 o'clock. It's about noon, 1 o'clock or so the next day and it still says it's charging my battery. And uh, I've had everything on this system turned off until just now. so may not be big enough to keep up with this with this battery but anyway so either way even if I got a bigger one it would be the same concept so battery tender runs down and into the battery box I'll see if I can open this to show you so in here I have a uh, deep cell or deep cycle deep deep cycle battery um, it's a big one and I got a big one because it was only like 20 bucks more than the smaller one um, looks like it's got 845 marine cranking amps but it's got 114 amp hours which is good that's that's pretty good size um, this would also be a good little battery if I was gonna put a small solar system um, or solar charger on it. It, it, would, it holds a lot of amp, amp hours. So that's the battery and then the battery tender just comes in and ties right into the terminals straight from the battery tender. And then out from these terminals we have a set of wires that go up into a 410 watt power converter or inverter and you can see they're just tied in on the end there everything is fused fuses are super important unless you want to spend a lot of money replacing stuff later um, if there's any kind of shorts if uh, these wires got too hot um, anything that happens it'll blow a fuse as opposed to burning up your equipment and burning down your greenhouse <laughs> or your basement or whatever the case is so uh, 410 watt inverter and then from there we have a little cord here that plugs into it and it feeds into this box here so in this box I have a regular single pole standard residential switch the only difference right now is this one is a lighted one um, it's not necessary I just thought it was cool <laughs> so I got it so we run from a switch just like you would in residential power you've got a neutral and a hot coming in from the inverter so your neutral ties off to neutral lines and your hot leg will switch from here to this side and then it comes out the back and up and over and it goes over to our tank float switch so that right there is a 110 volt tank float switch now, the only reason for the box here is just to have a place to make up wires and keep them watertight. Um, the wire on this float switch was about a foot long, and so I needed that to reach all the way over to my control board. So both of these wires here are regular hot wires. There's no, no neutral or no ground here. It's just two hot wires. And in, in illustration, what it does is that other switch that was over there when that switch is on it sends power to one side of this switch when this switch trips it sends power off and back down the other line back over to the control section control center and into this outlet here which is where the neutral is tied in as well so now you're coming back with a hot and then you've got your neutral coming from here so your hot and your neutral tied to this receptacle so that makes up that part. And then 
there's a wire that comes off the other side of that receptacle that goes back to our indicator lights here and powers this red lamp. So in essence, when, that's, when that outlet is hot or has power on it, this red light illuminates to let me know that backup power is on. So the sequence for the lights is basically this. If green and red are on, that means grid power is on, but the backup system is on. And that lets me know that either one, the pump has went out, or two, I'm out of water in my sump tank. But for whatever reason, water and oxygen are not moving into my fish tank. If just the green is on, all systems go. If just the red is on, that means the backup system is on and the power is out. So that's what that's how those sequence of lights will work. And then plugged in, so then anyway, so then plugged into this receptacle is my backup air pump, which when the system kicks on, it kicks it on. Got a uh, uh, oxygen or an air line ran over, and then it comes right over here and tees, goes through a reducer, and then through a one-way valve, and then down in the bottom of the tank is an oxygen stove or an air stove. And then on the other side of the T, it feeds my growing tank with my tilapia fingerlings in it. So crazy, it's like they know what time it is. It's almost time for the feeder to feed them. It's like they're just sitting there waiting on it. <laughs> anyway, they're healthy, hungry little dudes. We'll give them a little extra feed here so you can see. Here goes the feed, and there they go, all nutso. All right, I've shut the water off to the fish tank, which shuts off the Venturi. And on my system, because of the slow and the amount of water that's coming in, my water level is up when everything's running properly. When my water level, when my water shuts off to the tank, the water level drops down below the bottom of the slope. And it lets that little float switch right there do its thing. So it'll eventually drop down and uh, it'll shut off. So now we just sit here and watch for this indicator light. There it is. Indicator light came on, meaning that the float switch has been tripped. The air pump has come on, and that our air stone is running in the bottom of the fish tank to provide supplemental oxygen to the fish tank. So the water in the tank is not changing over, but the fish are going to stay alive because we have oxygen in the tank. So we're getting air to the tank. You can see over here, we're getting air through this little stone here. So provide, providing oxygen there. Now, the only way that this tank would not have uh, DO or dissolved oxygen would be if the electricity went out because right now I'm just running a standard fish tank filter pump on it. So it's creating the dissolved oxygen with the bubbles in the, in the waterfall. Um, which is fine, but in the in the event of a power outage, it would do the same thing. The indicator would kick on. The only difference would be that the green light would be off and the red light would be on, indicating that the power is out. So we can also, in this case, uh, you know, it, it's just showing that the the water is shut off. So it could be any anything. I mean, we can also flip this off here, and now you can see the green light's not on, the red light's on, that would simulate a power outage. And you can tell because our moving bed's not moving anymore. But our oxygen is still running on the battery backup, or our air stones are running on the battery backup. So go ahead and flip that back on and go ahead and kick our water back on to the fish tank. Now we're back running there. 
and then it'll fill back up that little float switch will kick back on uh, once it fills up and once it fills back up our red light will shut off and our air pump will also shut off and there it goes so our water level is back up and it's pushed the switch back up to shut the backup power off see the air stone's not running anymore so now we're back on normal operating mode all right guys so that's how i'm choosing to combat a uh, emergency situation in the aquaponic system like i said power outage tank uh, pump outage or uh, a water shortage in the sump uh, my fish will stay alive uh, with the supplemental oxygen or supplemental air coming through uh, from an air pump um, with this system so it's pretty simple there's nothing complicated about this system at all um, the wiring is all straightforward if you comprehend and you know anything about electrical um, it's super easy like I said if you're not comfortable dealing with electrical then uh, contact someone who is um, everything here is protected on a ground fault um, so my entire greenhouse the whole mini farm is protected with ground fault uh, circuit interrupters as well as a ground fault breaker so I've got double protection um, for uh, because I'm using so much I'm using electricity around water it's important to stay safe and not get electrocuted that's pretty much it for this video if you have any questions or comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to check out our suggested uh, videos and playlists. And also, if you're not familiar with uh, Heritage Pride Homestead, click on the little link there and it will take you back to our channel. You can check out our stuff. Don't forget to check also in the description box below for the Facebook and Instagram. Follow me on there. You guys get to see some awesome uh, updates before the videos even are published. So. Uh, and it will also notify you when a new video has been uploaded. So anyway, uh, like I said, if you have any questions about the system, leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to you when I can. And um, yeah, that's it. It's important to take care of your fish. Think about a backup system in the event of a power outage or pump outage. Until next time, get out there and shoot some guns. Be safe and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.